consider subscribing or checking out our Patreon to support us. By now, some of you may have seen the trailer for a new film entitled Burial. It is a post-war thriller that follows a group of Russian soldiers as they transport what is thought to be the corpse of Hitler. Along the way, there is an unknown looming threat, werewolves, or something along those lines. When I saw this trailer, I thought I would blend the patron's input on a video of World War II content with what I had originally planned. Across the stories and tales of werewolves in German mythology, there seems to be a connecting item that is a sash, belt, or buckle that is used to transform. This isn't always the case. Sometimes it is a sorcerer who can transform themselves or others. I bring this up because I think it's not only interesting from a historical perspective, but it's important to understand as the Nazi party leaned heavily into the usage of German mythology and folklore. The werewolves of World War II came in different forms, depending on location, means of communication, political leader, and the point in time. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to primarily speak on Werwolf and Radio Werwolf. From the perspective of the Werewolves, the most important story is that of Hermann Lanz's Der Werwolf, where he creates an archetype for folkish heroes, embattled but fundamentally decent people who form a ritualistic secret band in remote areas. These bands would deal out terror to foreign mercenaries against the backdrop of the Thirty Years' War. Werwolves were originally revived in the post-World War I Freikorps, building into Peter von Hedebrecht, dubbed the Werwolves, taking the name directly from Lons. Perry Bittescombe, in the book The Last Nazis, states the Werwolves were deployed in guerrilla operations against the Polish, and also used as a para-political party of the same name, fighting against Marxism and liberalism. They would eventually be absorbed into the Nazi party, and their theme and symbols saved for a later time. Der Werwolf also contained usage of the Wolfsangel, a heraldic charge or symbol inspired by medieval European wolf traps that consisted of a Z-shaped hook. Medieval pagans believed that the symbol possessed magical powers and could ward off wolves. It became an early symbol for German liberty after 15th century peasant revolts and the Thirty Years' War, before eventually being used by the Nazi party. Werwolf was a plan to create a resistance force behind enemy lines as the Allies advanced throughout Germany. They were meant to be organized, elite troops operating secretly behind enemy lines, and never to act outside of the German high command. If captured, they would be treated as soldiers. This was an important distinction. Werwolf was originally assigned to Hans Adolf Prutzmann. As a quick and side note, in The Last Nazis, Perry Bittescombe states that the caretaker who was watching Prutzmann, Sergeant Major Edwin Austin, was the same soldier that was guarding Himmler. They both died by self-inflicted cyanide poisoning. I did try to look up more information on the suicide, but couldn't find much on it. There is debate on whether these Verval forces were intended to function as guerrilla forces, but it would seem this is a misconception based on propaganda disseminated throughout Radio Verwolf, which was not connected to the military unit. Some debate has risen over the issue of whether the term Verwolf was meant to invoke Lon's work. Apparently Himmler himself had told his SS section chiefs in the fall of 1944 that the name was drawn from Hermann Lon's books. Although there was an effort to publicize Werewolf, it is thought that some were happy to see it not being done actively or correctly enough to keep the operation as secret as possible. They feared that if it came in the limelight, it would cause the Allies to operate guerrilla forces in occupied areas. Many Nazi leaders had their own hands in the mix. One such example is Leis Freikorps, whose primary function was to ambush enemy armored spearheads. They would be equipped with Panzerfaust. And there was Goebbels Radio Werewolf, a broadcast intended to incite the population in occupied areas and to spread the idea of its clandestine guerrilla operations. It opened with the sound of a howling wolf and spoke of fighting to the death. On the 23rd of March, 1945, Goebbels gave a speech entitled the Werewolf Speech, in which he urged every German to fight to the death. Due to this and the partial dismantling of the organized Werewolf, confusion set in, and Werewolf had changed drastically from an organized elite military unit working behind enemy lines to an unregulated guerrilla unit, post-defeat, mostly composed of Hitler Youth and SS members. These operators were local, decentralized, and worked in cells. Members of Werwolf cells were known to each other, but not to other cells. Their orders were delivered and information retrieved by mobile SS officers and other means like shortwave wireless sets. Although some dismissed the effectiveness or damage caused by Werwolf actions, there was some considerable fear and damage done, supposedly. Eisenhower himself believed he would face extensive guerrilla warfare. Some example of supposedly Werewolf operations were 
On the 25th of March, 1945, a newly appointed mayor, Franz Oppenhoff, was assassinated outside his home by an SS unit, which was supposedly composed of Verevel trainees. There was also the Pennsburg murders in April of 1945, which included the assassinations of the mayor of Pennsburg, Bavaria, and 14 others, apparently carried out by Verevel cells. It should be noted that many did not support Verevel. They either found it to be a Goebbels propaganda trick or stated that these lawless actions would be followed up with heavier punishments. In the end, they were right. There was considerable punishment administered on the rest of the population due to these variable actions. In Allied control areas, collective punishments were given. In Soviet controlled areas, thousands of youth were arrested as variables and executed or sent to special camps ran by the NKDV. It was no great surprise that the German government canceled the variable movement on the night of May 5th, 1945 six days after the death of Hitler. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so on Patreon. You'll get stickers, merch, credit, special access to our Discord server, and you can even become a producer of the channel. Special thanks to everyone who checks out anything that Midrealm does.